guys and man have i been putting hours on this jeep so let's get on into it here just as an overview of all the stuff that has happened in this thing and boy has this been a long drawn out project and i'm ready for a customer to come get this thing uh so we'll start front of the jeep here and just kind of walk through it of all the things this thing came in for to be done uh first up um the customer had brought it in it was leaking through one of the axles. I can't remember if it was this side or that side, um, which we knew it had bad axle seals in it. We could not get axle seals in it in time for the event when this thing originally left the shop. Uh, so we put all new axle seals in it and a pinion seal. Uh, up next is the rack and pinion. Uh, this rack and pinion here is a brand new one. Um, the old rack and pinion that was on it, it was my fault. I switched the lines out and I blew out the seals and rack and pinion. So it was sending power steering fluid everywhere. So I was hoping just to get a seal to fix it and couldn't get any seals. So that's, I think that's some of this Chinese stuff these days. So anyways, got a brand new rack and pinion for it. Got everything hooked up right. All that's working now. We're good to go there. Uh, up next, the customer had asked for a new dipstick to be made and it needed a locking dip dipstick for the transmission. Uh, that job is complete made him a new one there so now he has a locking dipstick so now he's in good shape there uh, up next is the turn signals uh customer had 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 a problem with one side of the turn signals not working and it was just something as simple as a ground wire had had been uh unhooked and it was from when they had worked on it to do some head work to it so that's fixed turn signals were working uh up next when he brought it down uh, this wasn't on here when it left um, our shop. So now these things need to be wired in. That's the last little project that needs to be done this thing before it leaves. So that needs to be done, but that, that'll be done here quickly. Uh, up next inside the Jeep here is this cover here around the heater hoses. This is the heater box and there's heater hoses that's in here that I wanted to make sure there was a shield on in case there ever was a blowout or something like that or a hose come off. You wouldn't have to worry about it getting on the legs of the passenger over here. So, as you guys can see, into the shifter here. The guts of the shifter is open, and boy, am I defeated on this shifter. Um, I've never had this situation happen before this bad, and this shifter has kicked my butt pretty dang bad uh, so here let's talk about it what the problems are so this is a ratcheting shifter okay so how you shift it is you ratchet through the gears okay so customer came to us when we originally built this thing and um, originally built this jeep and this was a shifter he had already had and he wanted to make this thing electric shifted or air shifted and uh uh, we brought concerns up about that with using this type of shifter that I didn't know if it could be done or not because I'd never seen one done before because of the ratcheting mechanism that is on it. Um, so we dug into it, uh, made a really nice, you know, cover and stuff for this existing shifter and stuff and um, made all that nice, made the shifter work. But when it come to putting the shifter solenoid on it, uh, it don't work. Um, the shifter solenoid works. We can make it RPM shift. Uh, we can make it do the one, you know, the first to second and second to third shift. But this shifter is so stiff because of this spring that's in the ratcheting system. And because this thing works on an arc instead of a straight back and forth, um, it don't like it. 
I've made multiple revisions of this bracket here, tried to mount it down at an angle. I've mounted it up high. We put different mounting points here and time after time after time, this thing still will not shift and it will not shift consistently. So to me, that means it don't work. And you guys can see all the different shims here I've used. This is, this was stuff to mock up to try to get it to work and then we'd make all nice billet stuff for it, but it won't work. Um, I've tried and tried. So suggested to the customer, I said there's a few shifters that's out there. I suggest getting either Motion Raceworks billet shifter that's air shifted. Uh, the wiring would still work for it. You just hook it up to the solenoid for the air cylinder or get a precision shifter for it. And uh, so either, either one of those would work. I'll put pictures up in there of what those are and what I suggest to get, but that's what I suggest to the customer. All right, so moving on from that catastrophe there. Uh, moving on down the line here, uh, the fuel cell is located here in the back of the Jeep. It does have a sending unit in it, and when the Jeep left from here, the sending unit was not hooked up. So I got that programmed into the smart dash. That's right there. And now he has a gauge that shows how much fuel level is in it. Uh, moving on here, something else that was going on right here, you guys can see, you can kind of see this bundle right here. And I got a zip tie, I need to clean up that. But anyways, the battery cables I did have mounted here on this side here. I didn't like that. Um, so I redone all that and got all that stuff bundled up together in really strong bundles. And it's now on the other side of the chassis. Just for safety reasons, that's just my personal preference get all the wiring on the inside of the chassis. That's, that was just something I saw that I was like, hey, I need to fix that. So I fixed it. Uh, up next, uh, let's see, here's anything back here at the back I need to be done. Oh, the customer wants this uh, dome light here hooked up for the tag. Uh, that's gotta be done. I gotta finish up on that stuff here real soon. And that crap will be done. All right, so moving on. Uh, mirrors, mirrors are now on the Jeep. Customer wanted that done. Those are on there. There you go. Uh, those are just stock uh, Jeep Scrambler mirrors and they're on under nice. So those are done. Uh, the Jeep had a leak on one of the brake lines. It was the front one. Uh, completely redone that whole entire line to fix that. That problem is now fixed as well. So that one's done. Uh, moving on here, anything else? Oh, last problem here, and this was a big, big problem. Customer wanted these tires, these big scoops, to be fitted to work on this Jeep, okay? And this is a complex problem right here because of originally, when we built this Jeep, the axles were wider, both the front and the rear, okay? And how you can tell is these brackets right here on the four link there, that's kind of how you can tell. See how close it is to right there? Okay, all this stuff got shortened, all right? And that was a request of the customer because he didn't like how far the wheels stood out from the Jeep using stock um, length axles, which I understand you want your wheels tucked in to look good on the Jeep. But what we didn't realize what was gonna happen by doing that an existing set of rims and tires now became obsolete because of the dimensions didn't work when it came to the offset. And the offset is this right here. So if you see how deep this is, so this is a wheel offset, all right? So this one was made for specifically those wide axles. So it would look good on the Jeep and get those, those rims and tires scooched on in to the inner fender well there okay so that was going to work originally but because of shortening the axle tubes that killed all that so now this offset is messed up and he's going to have to get a different offset of rim uh simple as that and i think they make a shim for these because it's a three-piece uh rim i think there's an insert they make to get that all spaced off there and i think that's what they're going to do to fix that um, that being said, another thing we done so he would have the most amount of space. These aluminum billet 
anti-roll arms. You can see them right there I'm pointing at, that little arm right there. They used to be mounted out here. I changed all that, cut all that off, and you can see the mounts for it right there. That's the old mounts. All that got moved in bore, so now they can fit a very wide selection of tires and rims on this thing. So yeah, a lot of updates on this thing, a lot of fixes that had to be done, and boy, am I wore out. Uh, this took a lot of time to do for all the projects there that was listed, and it was very um, minute detail things that were really complex to do, but they're done. There it is, the Jeep's done. And now the customer can go and take this thing, have it dynoed, and uh, they can go have some fun with this deal. All right guys, we got the Jeep working. It's been a while since I drove it. Needs a little bit of tune-up going on with it right now. It's got a little bit of a sputter to it. We're just making sure everything we've done is okay right now. So far, temperature's looking good. Run about 140 degrees. Oil pressure looks good. No leaks so far. The more it warms up, it seems to be doing a bit better. That's probably the self tune on the Holly working on it a little bit. When we first started up, it was spitting and sputtering pretty bad. We take it up the road here. Still needs a little bit of brake work. Keep laying on it, but it's not bad. guys and gals there it is um, this thing is ready to go back home we've got the tail light tag hooked up for that light we've got the side marker lights hooked up both front and rear um, the customer was having issues out of the headlights that's fixed and I'll turn those on so you guys can see that real quick do, do, do. Right here. here you guys go Headlights working, we're in good shape. So uh, yeah, that was a nice little bit. It need to be done there. And this job is complete. Go back here and turn the master kill switch off. Boom, they can come get it and it can be on its way. Uh, we've got a bunch of extra spare parts for a customer come and get and come get all their stuff. And uh, this thing can go to its home and they can go dyno it. and get this thing running really good all righty guys um we got the thing back in the shop uh big shout out to my wife hannah for helping me out on bleeding the brakes again on it we got that fixed uh we did test drive it one more time all that stuff was good um the brakes feel good now and i'm happy with that and uh it's definitely doing a whole lot better uh, so all those little jobs are done and uh now um we'll do a little bit of montage here while i'm waiting on the customer to come get it and we're gonna clean the jeep up and uh, yeah so you guys sit back enjoy the montage and uh, let's clean this bad boy up That's it. Thank y'all for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Don't forget to go over to KillMurrSports.com where we've got all kinds of merch over there and all kinds of high performance products as well. And definitely a big shout out to our sponsors and partners. Till next time, you guys have a good one.